is the sound of howling monkeys. There was a sign that said that howling monkeys are sedentary and if you do encounter one, they like to poop on your head just to make sure that you know they're the dominant species, which I thought was hilarious. Hey guys, so I'm at Tikal National Park and we are gonna go see some Mayan ruins. I'm gonna take you to five of the main temples. This was actually like the capital of the Mayan civilization back in the days. So it's a really big complex. Unfortunately, 80% of it is buried underneath the jungle, but what they have excavated, we will go and check it out. And most of these pyramids or temples were made for either for scientific reasons, the other reason why they, they get built is because they're like burial monuments for the different kings and queens of the past. First off, we're gonna go to Temple 1 and Temple 2, and they're the most famous of the Tikal parks. Temple 1 was for one of the greatest rulers, and actually it was for his burial site. So they actually found his remains kind of under the temple. And then Temple 2 was something that he built for his wife as a dedication to her. And then after that, I do want to go check out the palace that the royalty back in the day used to live in. So we're going to go and check it out. Temple 1 and Temple 2 are located in the Grand Plaza. And one thing to look out for if you do come here is to look out for snakes because there are very poisonous ones here and apparently they camouflage very well into the ground. And then there are jaguars and pumas here, so just be careful with that. There are also spiders and tarantulas and scorpions at night, so you also want to be careful with that as well. was built for one of the kings and I think he was one of the greater kings but um this is actually his place of burial and he was found I believe buried right under his, that corner of his temple over here is pretty much the cemetery for the other royalties of the past and then this right across from it is Temple 2, and this was built for Temple 1's queen. We're actually gonna go and climb it. So this stairway will take us up to Temple 2. Temple 1. And unfortunately, we cannot climb Temple 1. And now we're going to head down and go check out the palace. All these buildings 
are made from limestone. So you do see a lot of graffiti, which you really should not do. Oh, because limestone is a very soft type stone. So it's very easy to carve anything into it. Oh, and that was the last room that we were in. I guess this must have been their, must have been their porch. Looking out in the courtyard. See, do not scratch. Another room. So I read that there used to be lagoons by the palace. And I wonder if like down here used to be a lagoon. I really like these ancient civilizations and ruins because I like to see how it might have been back in the days. It's kind of interesting to think about like where they used to live, how, how they used to do things and see all the different architecture and living arrangements and reasons as to why they do some stuff. I'm really into ruins and archeology. span I'm not sure if you can see the very top there. Okay, so that is the very top of Temple 3. And this is the rest of it covered under the jungle. Temple 3 has not been really excavated from the archaeologists because it takes a lot of effort to excavate. The roots of the trees in the jungle have been so intertwined with the buildings that if you mess with it, you you have the possibility of messing with the temple itself. This is what the archeologist believes that it looks like. Um, using some laser LIDAR technology, they have been able to map out pretty much the whole city here. Unfortunately, they have not excavated many um, just because it's so much so much effort and they're probably going to change the ecology of the jungle if they mess with everything so they want to just leave the jungle as is and they're just happy with what they've found so far using the laser technology so here it says um, it's the temple of the jaguar priest and um, it relates to the last phase of the construction at Tikal uh, associated with Noon Bak Chak Tu who is considered the 31st ruler of the dynasty sequence and is represented on the lentil two of this temple. So you can see the very top, um, which I showed you before. If you can see, um, you can see some, some of the, the stairway, what used to be the stairway. Um, and this was how all of the temples were found and only a few of them were fully excavated. Oh, you can see it from here. So you can see the top of the temple here, and then the big mound of trees and jungle that covers it. Um, and yeah, so this is Temple 3. They're like a relative of the raccoon. They just have like super long snouts, 
and super long tails. Otherwise, they do kind of look like a raccoon. And these are females because they travel in a huge group. And the males are solitary, so that's how you know if they're male or female. Oh, I'm going to leave. Oh! God, they're not even scared. And here's temple four. And we can actually climb up this temple. This is the stairway to temple four. This is the view from Temple 4. Temple 4 is thought to be a monument for one of the, the kings here. And this is the tallest temple in Tikal. And over there you can see Temple 1, Temple 2, and Temple 3. Obviously this is one of the harder climbs. And this is Sloping Piano Temple, the second largest complex in the Lost World. It features Teotihuacan in supporting evidence of the trade relations between Tikal and Teotihuacan. And this is one of the astrological temples of the Mayans. During the solstices, you can see the sun right above this temple. And it has, it's pretty much their Mayan calendar right in this temple here. And so that's the astronomical pyramid. And this is the observation deck over here that I guess they must have stood on so that they could read the different astronomical solstices and calendars and all that. So I'm going to climb the Grand Pyramid because it has a very nice view on top. I think those are ants. They're so big. They look like mini spiders. There's Pyramid 4. So check out these crazy roots from the trees. Here's the 
backside of the Grand Temple, and the backside is not excavated, but the front is. His parrot was eating in the tree, and his food droppings almost hit me. Temple 5, one of Tikal's highest temples. I read that this might be dedicated to one of the rain gods. There are actually six temples that have been partially um, or fully excavated here, but I'm skipping the sixth one because it's further out from the pictures. It looks like it's really not even excavated, so I'm not sure if it's really worth the walk. Overall, Tikal was pretty good. It was pretty cool to experience the jungle and also the wildlife. As far as the ruins go, I wasn't as impressed with it just because a lot of it hasn't been excavated. There wasn't too many artwork or hieroglyphs on the actual ruins itself, unlike um, Chichen Itza and unlike Peru, and as well as the Egyptian ruins and pyramids. And also most of the information about these ruins are just theories because they can't really excavate it. So they don't have a lot of artifacts to back up the theories. I guess for me, I wasn't quite as impressed with it as other ruins that I've seen but um, it's pretty cool if you're in Guatemala to check it out. Mm -hmm.